How to Buy Stocks is the topic of conversation today on Small Stakes. I'm here with Mikey Goff. This is some nice small exchange sponsored uh, video content coming your way. And, and I, I think today's going to be a fun conversation. This all started with my brother, who is older than me and probably smarter than me in, in a, uh, a many, many ways, but financial, financial savviness, not one of them. And he hits me up, as I'm sure you're hit up plenty of times by friends and family, Mikey. And he goes, I have some money. I want to buy stocks. What the hell do I do? And the conversation, like my whole thing is I never jump on here. If anybody's ever watched uh, me or Mikey or anybody from the small exchange or Tasty Trader or wherever, um, we rarely get on here and are like, oh, you need to buy this stock or you need to buy this future or you need to buy options on this thing. It's more so like, how do you want to time this? What's appropriate for you? How do you want to diversify and the mechanics to do that? And so as I was talking with him, I was like, man, if he's got this question, I bet a lot of people have this question. So let's bounce it out and let's talk about, you know, time frames, different products, what you should look for when you're looking to buy stocks. So not going to be a segment on like, oh, you should buy semiconductors versus energy stocks. That's not what we're talking about. But like the how is very important, right, Mikey? I think it's the most important part. I think so too. The how is going to be emphasized here so much more than the what. And hopefully if you're watching Tasty Trade, you have a nice ground level education on financial markets. You probably know about options, you probably know about stocks. So it's not going to be about platform setup. It's going to be about getting into the market, what to look for, you know, whether you're buying a high or a low and kind of how you set uh, that determining factor into how to actually buy. Yeah, because here's the thing, and, and this is like, it's, it's, it's empowering, but also uh, debilitating at the same time, which is mm -hmm. like, if you bought the S&P 500, you know, we make some great stock indexes and in stock index futures that you can buy from the small exchange, but obviously the most popular stock benchmark out there, the S&P 500, if you bought it any day prior to Friday, you'd be up money. And looking at this chart, it's like, it seems like a no brainer, like, oh, I could have bought this thing at any point. Like I, I, I should have bought this every single day from 1990 until now, or from whenever I was born and I would have been good. But there, you, you can't escape this feeling. And I talked with Pete Momad earlier this week. It's, a, it's akin to like, should I buy real estate? The answer is yes, most of the time. But whatever time frame, whatever period you're in, whether it's like 100 years ago or 50 years ago or five days ago, it's like I'm buying the top in this market. And it never feels good. And of course, there are crashes, but when things are crashing, people are rarely like, oh, this is when I buy. It's like the old, the old saying is like, you should be greedy when people are fearful, but you're often not. And, um, and, and looking at this, Mikey, like, even if I told you like the S&P 500, all time highs, it's up, you know, thousands of percent in the last couple of decades you still worry about buying the top, right? Yeah, totally. I mean, how cruddy a situation would it have been to start investing in 96 and then retire in 2009 and like you're at the same level and you were told by all these yep. advisors, if you hold long enough, you'll be okay. Uh, and then you zoom out, it always amazes me to look at these long-term charts. I mean, where we are 4,000 relative to 1,500, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just unbelievable. I mean, even today with the S&Ps up, I think we're up 40 handles now or something, it's, right. it's tough to buy into that type of strength. But if you're really going meta, talking about the first time you're buying stocks, I think any time to at least start and get that feeling and understand how it works is better than no time. Well, that's that's exactly right, right? Because like we know the stock market tends to move higher. That's backed by statistics that go back as far as the 90s, 80s, whenever you want to start looking at statistics. Uh, the stock market tends to move higher more often than it moves lower. And looking at this chart, it's evident that it is higher. You, 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 sorry, what's that, John? Oh, you froze uh, up for a minute there. Oh, sorry, my bad. Yeah, my our internet is a little spotty. We got a lot of people here doing content at the same time. But anyways, you have here a conundrum whereby it's like you've got all these supporting facts 
but it never feels good to buy this high market. And it's almost like people psychologically would rather the market appreciate 10% in the next week and then on the following Monday fall 2% and buy into that, which is you know counterintuitive. You're still buying it higher. So what I would say is reducing the size straight away alleviates so much stress. Like it goes so far. And I, I talked about this with my brother who was like, I've got, you know, X amount of money to, to spend in the stock market to invest. I'm looking at this, this, and this. And I was like, great, diversify everything else. And he was like, but like, is today the day or is tomorrow going to be a better day or next week? What if things crash next week? And it's like, what you can do is slice that thing up, slice it into two or slice it into three, slice it into four, whatever, do something today. And then from there, you can price average from here on out. And what's the great thing about this, Mikey, and you can give your opinion to this strategy as well, is you get something going today. Like today, you finally, you're no longer this passive person who's like, I'll do it next week. Maybe the stock market will crash in August. I'll do it in August or something like that. You get some stake in the game. And then if that market does crash in a month from now, then you get hit, then you get better prices. That's great. If you never get dinged on these orders in the market, that means that your initial stake that you did today is appreciating. So it is alleviating stress and kind of becomes a win-win situation all in all, creating a less scary process for buying stocks that you set out to do in the first place. Yeah. I love the way that you phrase this because you can't know where the market is going to be tomorrow, the yeah. next day. No one will know if it's going to be trading lower or higher, but I love that you've wrapped a strategy around that. Uh, you know, dollar cost averaging, slowly incrementing and building your position over time is actually just a mathematically sound way to do it yeah. um, because you're getting some of those low points and some of those high prints as well. And over time, it just kind of averages out uh, very nicely. And so apt uh, is to stay small. I, I think Tasty Trade yeah. emphasizes this so nicely is uh, you don't want to have everything in one position. It just feels uncomfortable. And frankly, it's not a wise decision to not diversify, in sure. my opinion. Um, so by just staying small, getting in the game, you're going to learn so much, not just from the price appreciation or depreciation of your position, but also just being there and the feelings and the intellect that you'll pick up being in a trade. Yeah. Like price averaging is almost a version of diversification in its own right. Like, you know, the, the topic of the conversation being how to buy stocks here today. And you say to yourself, like, all right, I have 20 grand that I want to take to the stock market. And I would advocate for like, so 20 grand would be akin to three small stocks futures, which by the way, would only cost you, it would cost you less than two grand to get that 20 grand uh, investment using small stocks futures because that's how efficient they are. And thankfully, they're so small that you can chop that investment into three there and you can get one going today and then also get another one going in the future if the market collapses. So like you get the, you get the one done today at around $70, you put it in order or you monitor the market for like, if it falls below 65, I'm going to get the next piece done. And if it crashes all the way down to like, 50, then I'm going to get that last piece done. If it never gets there, then hey, you have a third or two thirds of your investment that's been appreciating this whole time. If it does get there, that first third or two thirds are underwater, but you didn't jump in, you know, 100% in one day. And the whole time, what's great psychologically is you've destigmatized this like huge lofty question that I know a lot of people in our age range, uh, they, they shy away from this because it's like, man, once I click that button, it's all over. But you don't need to click the button on 20 grand today. You click the button on, you know, a third of that, a quarter of that, chop it up and uh, price average here. And I think that's a really smart and simple, you know, this is, this is hopefully in, in this 10 minute segment, you learn just the first steps here of how to buy stocks and uh, already um, hopefully uh, uh, demystifying this uh, thing that can seem very daunting. 